How you doing guys? Welcome to a new experimental segment of Plumbing School I like to call Plumbing School Q&A. Over the recent few years of doing this channel, I've had the privilege of receiving several comments and questions from viewers around the world. And I do my best to answer and respond to them to the best of my knowledge and abilities. But I wanted to try something a little bit different and I have no idea how this is gonna go, but I'd like to test a new format that gives me the opportunity to reply to your technical questions and inquiries in a quick and simple video format rather than in text where I feel a little bit more limited than what I can do and or elaborate upon on video. One thing I do want to stress is that these simple Q&A sessions are not going to replace my long form videos or my shorts, but rather these Q&A videos are intended to be more of a supplement to those videos or any other questions that some viewers may have or be curious about that I may be able to help them up with. So let's see how it goes and please do let me know in the comments below what you think about this new format or maybe we can elaborate on it and make it even better. Okay, with that out of the way, here we go. Our very first Plumbing School Q&A comes from a viewer who goes by the name of Free Sung, who's inquiring in response to a short I published about the installation of an expansion tank for hot water tanks. So as to prevent the water heater's temperature and pressure from being triggered from excessive pressure building up inside the tank. As a quick recap, as water increases in temperature, which is exactly what happens in a hot water tank, so does its volume accordingly. We call this phenomenon thermal expansion. If that increasing volume within the system has nowhere to go, then pressure ends up building up and increasing quite drastically to the point where very bad things can happen. If you don't believe me, there's a Mythbusters video where the duo ended up pressurizing a standard hot water, hot water tank to a rating of about 300 PSI. And I don't want to spoil it for you, but here's a hint. If you do want to see that video, I'll make sure to leave the link in the comments below so that you can take a look at it. Have a look at it. It's quite fun. As the saying goes, don't try this at home. Okay, so this is an expansion tank which contains an air bladder within it. And we install these expansion tanks onto water heating system, onto certain water heating systems to compensate for any increases in water pressure resulting from an increase in water temperature, which would causes effectively causes the air bladder within the expansion tank to compress thereby equalizing the pressure within the system. So our viewer Free Sung's question is whether the same logic would apply to installing expansion tanks onto tankless water heaters. The short answer is that although it's perfectly fine and harmless to install an expansion tank onto a tankless water heater system, I would reason that doing so would not be necessary if the tankless water heater is set up specifically to deliver potable water to only the fixtures within the building. For better understanding of why that is, let's take a closer look at the two different hot water heating systems. So what we have here right in the middle is a standard water heater, not unlike water heaters that are typical across millions of homes around the world. So essentially, a traditional tank water heater is not much more than a glorified tea cutter, really. It's, it's actually quite simplistic, uh, whether it's electric or whether it's gas fired. Typically, the way a traditional water heater works is that it gets filled with cold water. Here's the incoming cold water line coming in from outside, goes in and fills up all the way to the top. Now, this water is coming in at a specific temperature, maybe 10 degrees Celsius, 15 degrees Celsius, depending on the time of the year. And the water either gets heated up via a gas source or an electrical source. And when this tank fills up, because the water is colder than you want it to be, typically water heaters heat up water to about 140 degrees Fahrenheit, there's a thermostat that kicks in and either allows the gas to fire up the flame or if it's electric to energize the elements. So this heats up to a certain temperature and under normal circumstances, this isn't a problem. As we see here, let's follow the system. So our water's coming in and it's making its way. Here's our cold water. And then it continues teeing off and it distributes to all the different fixtures within the building. In this case, we've got a simple faucet. So under this circumstance, not much can go wrong with respect to thermal expansion because along the line from the start of where the water comes in all the way to the water heater, if you notice, there's a completely open line here. And this is going directly to the municipality or, or the water main outside the building. So water in here as it gets heated up will indeed expand. But because it's an open line, this is what you call 
an open system. Any expansion of water is given the liberty to expand outward toward outside the building. And if somebody happens to turn on this faucet and calls for hot water, typically what happens is that hot water comes out. And as hot water makes its way toward the fixture, you have cold water replacing it at the same time. So this remains always full. Fine. So what ends up happening is that as cold water comes in, heats up, expands, but no problem because the water expansion has a means to escape outside the building. Let's change the scenario a little bit. I am going to install, at least virtually, what we call a check valve onto the cold water line. And a check valve, for those of you guys who aren't familiar with what a check valve is, is typically a one-way valve. It allows water to flow in one direction, but it does not allow it to flow backwards. So it only goes this way, hence the arrow that I put on this check valve. And there are different reasons to have a check valve, but primarily you don't want water to back up in the event of excessive pressure for one reason or another. So with this check valve in place, What's going to happen now is that with this water filled at a much lower temperature than it's going to end up being after the water gets heated by the water heater, in this scenario, the water has no place to expand. By the time it gets heated to 140 degrees Fahrenheit, without the ability to relieve any pressure, what's going to end up happening is that this temperature pressure relief valve along the side will become triggered. It gets triggered under two circumstances. One, if temperature reaches 210 degrees Fahrenheit, or two, if the pressure within the hot water tank ends up reaching 150 PSI. So then what ends up happening, this ends up weeping out. And this is the similar situation that we had in that video short that I mentioned earlier, is that the initial installer who ended up installing these lines installed a check valve, not only on the cold side, but for some odd reason, they ended up installing a check valve on the hot side as well. Typically, you don't need a check valve on the hot side. So what was happening, if nobody was using the water, this tank was filling up with colder water, heating up, and of course, as a result of thermal expansion, pressure would build up quite drastically in here to the point that it would trigger the temperature pressure relief valve. The only other way to relieve pressure was to open up the hot water tap. And then, of course, as soon as you open up the hot water tap, the pressure is instantly relieved because water cannot be compressed. So typically in the industry, when we have a situation like this and we don't have a means for water to escape, we install what is called an expansion tank or some people call it a bladder tank. And uh, those, of you, those of you who are on well systems, sometimes you'll refer to it as a well tank. It doesn't get installed for the same purpose, but does the exact same thing. So now with this expansion tank installed, what ends up happening, let's say nobody ends up using the water and Thermal expansion is taking its toll and causing the water to expand within the water heater. Because this expansion tank has a bladder full of air, as pressure goes up inside this water heater, the water, as pressure increases, squeezes and presses against this bladder inside the expansion tank. And it's a phenomenon that we refer to as Boyle's Law. And the expansion tank ends up maintaining or stabilizing that pressure so it won't set off that temperature pressure relief valve. It keeps it equal. So in the event that you do have a check valve in place, upstream of the water heater, an expansion tank is absolutely required without question. So now let's look at our second scenario. And instead of a traditional tank water heater, we now have a tankless water heater. And tankless water heaters typically work in the premise of on-demand water. Unlike a traditional tank water heater, which actually stores a predetermined amount of hot water and it keeps it hot indefinitely, a tankless water heater does not contain any stored water. Rather, as soon as a tap gets open on the hot side, the tankless water heater gets fired up and it goes through a heat exchanger and rather instantly or very rapidly heats up that water within the tank as the demand for water is on call. As soon as someone shuts that tap, the tankless water heater stops firing and whatever residual water is sitting in here just sits and cools off. In other words, there is a possibility for thermal expansion, but it's only going to expand throughout the duration that the tankless water heater is on. And because the tankless water heater is on only when there's demand for hot water, when the tap is open, 
it's not going to expand, it's not going to fire, and therefore it's not going to water in it, it's not going to expand or increase the pressure. So let's say that we actually even do install a check valve in line. So this is a similar situation that like we had in our last scenario with the traditional tank water heater. Here's our water meter line coming in. And now we have a check valve, so the water cannot go backwards. It's making its way in here. Now, let's say even with this check valve, unless this tankless water heater is serving a purpose other than for delivering potable water to the fixtures within the building, there is no need for an expansion tank. Sure enough, you can install an expansion tank if you want to, but there is no means for the water to expand at this point, or at least it'll minimally expand because it's only going to fire up and heat up when there's a demand for hot water. As soon as the faucet gets shut, then the water ceases to heat up. And if anything, any hot water in the pipes will rapidly cool down within the minutes that follow. The only other exception where you might need an expansion tank onto a tankless system is if it's serving a purpose, say for other than delivering domestic hot water to fixtures. Say for example, maybe there's a recirc line. A recirc line is typically a means of recirculating the water from the furthest fixture that's connected in the building back into the cold. So what ends up happening is the water is constantly circulating so that if the user wakes up in the morning and wants hot water, but the house is big and say that they're way on the other side of, the, of a giant mansion, there is always hot water on demand because this constantly circulates nonstop. And you need, of course, a research pump. There, there's more than, than just installing another line. It needs to circulate just like how the blood circulates within our, within our bodies. So that's one example, or maybe this tankless water heater is serving a hydronic system, which is gonna be firing nonstop. I don't recommend tankless water heaters for those applications because they burn out rather quickly if, if they're used constantly, consistently. A lot of manufacturer warranties for tankless water heaters are often voided or significantly impeded if the tankless water heater is being served for a purpose other than for domestic serving domestic hot water. So again, to recap, you can certainly put an expansion tank onto the water line, or actually you can even put it onto the, onto the hot water line for that matter. As long as it remains an open circuit throughout, you can do that as well, but you don't need it in this case. So hopefully that makes sense and it gives a better understanding as to why sure you could put it on, but it's not necessary to install an expansion tank onto a tankless water heater. So I hope you enjoyed this channel's very first Plumbing School Q&A segment. If you did like this new segment, I encourage you to please leave your comments in the section below. Let me know what you liked about it and let me know what you'd like to see different or what else you'd like to see on this channel, which will help me decide whether I should be making more of these kinds of videos for you. But if you did find it useful, please do feel free to hit that like button to your heart's content or maybe have your own plumbing related question. If you do, please leave your question in the comments below and I'll do my very best to address it. Meanwhile, I encourage you to subscribe to this channel to stay in the loop for other content that I'll be releasing shortly. Until then, thanks for watching and I look forward to seeing you all soon.